Hey, Tom, how you doing? I'm doing okay. I just want to start off real quick let you know, man, I've been listening to your show for a long time, and you helped me get out of, a, of a, an abusive three-year relationship. How did I do that? Well, I met this girl about three years back, and um, I just started talking to her, and um, I kind of went against your uh, your Like It's 101 and tried to chance it, and it just, you know, it started off real bad. And um, every day that I would take her to work and take her to her mother's and stuff like that, I would listen to your show, and every time I turned it to the dial, she she literally just slapped me in the face while I would listen to it and tell me to turn it off. And um, she was she, she offered, uh, she would threaten to, like, withhold sex from me if I had stopped listening to the show, you know, if I didn't stop and just, you know, she'd hit me, um, just, I mean, everything, especially when a lot of the times it just had to do when I was driving, you know what I mean? And um, every time I go to work, I just, I throw your show on or whatever, and I was just listening to the words that you said, you know what I mean? And then um, I called her up one day and I just, I just called her up and I just tore her a new one and told her I wasn't going to take it anymore. And she's like, you ain't going to leave me, you ain't going to leave me. And she says, well, you know what, we need to get married first. So I remembered your words, and I was just like, nah, cool. You know, I was like, nah, it's all right. And then she ended up saying that she was going to leave. So when I told her to go ahead and leave, she punched me in the face. What? Yeah, she punched me right in the face. Why would you tolerate that even once? No, well, it was, it was, that was what did it. You know what I mean? Yeah, but she had and, slapped you before. Well, yeah, she was even before, you know, but I, I was stupid, and I thought I was in love and everything, and, you know. But but, you're, but the minute someone slaps you in the face, that should be, you know, like, literally a slap in the face. That, that should tell you that uh, this is not love, that you are, uh, uh, you're enjoying being abused. Yeah, and, you know, I mean, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't really uh, smart about anything, you know what I mean? And, uh, like I said, I ignored, I ignored your words, and finally I just said, you know what, forget this, and when I told her I was going to leave, you know, that's when she just... She got up and she just wanted to get in my face and stuff. She's like, go ahead and be with your father. Go ahead and be with your father. And I'm like, what are you talking about? She's like, go, go ahead and be with your precious Tom. I said, all right. So then I packed my stuff and I, I just bumped out and that was it. Yeah, you're not going to move in with anybody again, are you, Eddie? Mm -hmm. No, I learned my lesson, man. I learned my lesson. And I, now, I learned way, how to I had told words, you. Man. I had told you and you knew. But yeah. you thought you knew more than I did, didn't you? <laughs> I thought I did, but, you know, I, I was put in my place that day. All right. You know, and then um, every back in the back in the time when uh, I listened to you uh, on those Fridays, you know, I'd come home with my lights on and I'd, I'd call her up and I'd tell her to come outside so that way she would know that I was listening to you, you know, for the Fridays. Uh huh. And every time, every time, oh, whose girl? Well, what girl were you looking at? And what girl flashed themselves and stuff like that? And it was great just to see her get angry because she knew I was listening to you. You know what right, I mean? But then she slapped you or hit you later on, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, that really, that's a very bad cycle to get into. And it's one you want to get out of, and you never, ever, ever tolerate that. Uh, but there's a zero tolerance policy on that. When someone does that once, you're out. That includes dating or anything. Think about that. It's 3 p.m. It's just begun. It's time for life just 101. In class, I learned to be a man. I spend the least amount of cash on the girls I can. Long time listener. First time guy. Gonna date a single mom Cause my professor tells me that it's wrong Gold picking chicks can dig their graves I won't be a pussy whip slave Long time listener
bombshells I like the way that love smells Long time listener First time caller Special time. And when I told you this week only, I wasn't kidding. It's this week only. Because the Tom Lankin show is this week only. And um, we'll be talking about that at 5 o'clock. And um, that's 5 o'clock Pacific time. For those of you freaks with the iPhones and the internet streams and what have you. Uh, we'll talk about that coming up at 5 o'clock. Did anyone give Dean the memo about Lycus 101 being at 3? Dean is in there screening calls. The first call he put up was about Manny Ramirez. Unless Manny needs to know how to get laid, take that down. No, no, Dean. I'm not going to take a call until you screen a 101 call, okay? I know everybody wants to say goodbye and all that. We'll get to that. But we cannot leave our 101 students in the lurch. And I have a final Lycus 101 lesson for you. And um, I, you know, I got a call from uh, our producer, Gary, who uh, called me today at home. And he said, uh, come on, everybody's doing goodbye shows today. And uh, are you sure you want to go on with 101? And my answer is yes. And I'm going to tell you why my answer is yes. Because uh, many of you take Lycus 101 very seriously. Many of you have depended upon Lycus 101, not just for information on how to get laid, but for information on how guys think, to find out how your friends are thinking, what they're doing. And many of you uh, live it as a lifestyle. And I could not just let that go without a final class. And that is what this is going to be. I want to tie up the last... 11 years of Lycus 101. We've been teaching Lycus 101 since 1998. And we're going to be, uh, we're going to be taking a, uh, a vacation for a little while. And so there will be no Lycus 101 classes. And so it's very important that we, uh, we get this message in here. And I want to get it in for you now. There's an overarching theme to everything I have taught in this classroom. And what that overarching theme is, is this. The key to getting chicks, the key to getting laid, the key to appearing successful, the key to being successful, it all begins with something that I had to learn myself. Love yourself. Love yourself first. I'm not talking about masturbation, you elementary morons out there. I'm talking to you about... The way you feel about yourself defines everything you are and everything you ever can be. In my life at 12 years old, I looked around an $80 a month apartment and my siblings and my dad, who was the hardest working person I ever knew, and he just essentially spun his wheels his whole life as he uh, attempted to uh, make a living and support a family. Um, the... The moment came when I stood up and I said the following. I said, I'm better than all this. I'm smarter. Got more going for me. 
I don't want to be caught in the quicksand. At age 17, when I was about to leave town, everyone said, why aren't you going to the senior prom? Why are you going to the junior prom? My fear was this. I thought 10 steps ahead. And I said to myself, let's say I take a girl to the prom. Let's say she becomes my girlfriend. I'm going to be stuck in the quicksand. The quicksand of people who make $25,000 a year. The quicksand of people who have three children by age 21. The quicksand of not going to college. Not ever being a professional. Not ever making any money. Not ever being able to say, I am someone. Fortunately, I knew that at age 16. At age 12, I knew I was more than this. At age 16, I said I didn't want to get caught in the quicksand. My whole life has been about trying to improve my lot in life because I knew that I was destined to be somebody, to be somebody great. The problem with so many of you guys who I've talked to over the years, and I've talked to so many of you, is that you start off life thinking, I have nothing, my family has nothing, I'm just, uh, you know, uh, smoking uh, smoking weed and um, uh, drinking, and I've got my girlfriend who'll have sex with me ten times a day. Nothing more is ever going to come of this. I'm here to tell you that I came out of the same world you're in now. I grew up dirt poor. I grew up in a family where we didn't know successful people, and we didn't know how to how to be successful. My mom told me ridiculous things over the years like, we don't play tennis, that's for rich people. We don't play the piano, rich people have pianos. And I said, F all that, I'm better than that. I am better than that. Over the years, I did some backsliding occasionally, I fell off the wagon. Sometimes I felt bad for myself, I felt lonely, I felt alone. And I had to get back up on the wagon. I had to get back up on the horse. In one case, I had to start going to a therapist to remind myself that I'm better than all that. That I deserve to be loved. Not by women. I don't look for love in the people I'm having sex with. Love has to come from within. You have to love you. And the reason you boys get into so much trouble and you have to call your professor for advice is because in many cases you don't have faith in yourself, you don't love yourself, you don't think you're ever going to be anybody. I grew up in one of the worst neighborhoods in the United States. There was no reason to believe I would ever be anything or anyone. Had I been like so many of you callers and just threw in the towel and said, F it, I'll just get a job down at the uh, Exxon station and be done with it. I wouldn't be standing here talking to you now. In my final class of Lycus 101, I want to remind you that if what you want to do is to get laid, you have to be successful or you have to appear to be successful. And in order to do that, you have to love yourself and believe in yourself. Don't be expecting other people to pump up your ego or pump up your self-esteem. It has to come from you. You have to believe you are great. You have to believe you are better than others. And if you don't believe that, then you need to become better than others. Get more schooling. Work harder. Practice more. Practice your jump shot. Whatever it is you have to do, if you're not better than others, make yourself better than others. You'll get laid. You'll have money. You'll be able to breathe easy when bad things happen. If there's one thing I've noticed talking to thousands, tens of thousands of people who've called in over the years, it's that so many of you have no faith in yourself. You don't love yourself. You don't even like yourself. You don't think you're going to be anybody. And you live your life like you're not going to be anybody. You have sex without condoms. You take risks. You risk HIV. You risk impregnating people. You don't care because you think there's nothing going on in your life anyway. There were times in my life that I thought I wanted to commit suicide when I was a kid. 
Thank goodness I didn't. Because I had no idea how great it was all going to turn out. And the same will happen for you. But first you have to believe it, and you have to have reason to believe it. Start loving yourself. Start treating yourself like you're better than all this. And pretty soon you will be better than all this. I am your professor. This is my classroom. It's time for the final edition of Like Us 101. Call me now. Can you attend my class? It is for your own good. I mean, a girl decides how far she's going to let you go in the first five minutes. You in my class? I am today. So how long do I wait to call? A day. Tomorrow. <clears throat> Tomorrow, then a day. Yeah. So two days. Yeah, I guess you could call it that. Two Definitely. days. Yeah, two days is like industry standard. Well, how long are you guys going to wait to call your babies? Six, Six days. Hi, this is Nikki. Leave a message. Hi, uh, Nikki. This is Mike. I met you at the um, at the Dresden uh, tonight. Uh, I just called to, to say that I had a great time, and you should call me tomorrow for in uh, two two days. Hi, this is Nikki. Leave a message. Hi, uh, Nikki. This is Mike again. I, I just called because it sounded like your, your machine might have cut me off when I when I uh, before I finished leaving my number. Uh, my number is two one. Hi, this is Nikki. Leave a message. It's, it's, it's only been six months. Mike? Nikki! Great! Don't ever call me again. Wow! I, I guess you're home. How many times you call her this week? Twice. Twice? You called her twice? Dan, never call abroad more than once a week. Never, ever, ever. Tom, 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 like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's Like Is 101 on the Tom Like It Show. It's the Tom Like It Show. And we go out number one in that 2554. Number one. Ahead of all the rock stations, ahead of all the sports talk stations, ahead of everybody who's trying to sell advertising to that demographic, we go out number one on the list. And um, there's no better way to go out than number one. Thank you for your support all these years. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. It's our telephone number. It's like us 101. Two hours earlier today, because at 5 o'clock I'll talk about... The end. Let's say hello to Steve on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, how are you? I'm doing okay, Steve. Thank you so much for taking my call. Sure. You know, I just want to say real quick that I think I owe you an apology, Tom. Because as I listened to you over the years, I always said to myself, he doesn't know what he's talking about. He's crazy. He hates women. I never really believed in you. I never really liked listening to what you said. But the more I hear you, the more I understand how much sense you make and all the all the... Bad decisions I made in my life. I always thought I should listen to Tom. I should listen to Tom. Yeah, I um, I know what you mean, and uh, you know I've always said, uh, unfortunately, for whatever reason, uh, maybe just because I'm a geek, I don't know. But uh, since I was a kid, I was the I told you so kid. I, I have always said that if I ever had a gravestone, it would say, "See, I told you I was sick." Uh, I I have been in this position many times it's not very rewarding you would think you'd be very smug about it i really do try to help people by trying to tell them what's going to happen 10 steps ahead i'm not psychic i just tend to think in an organized way and i think 10 steps ahead i mean i think what you just said in your opening statement was probably the greatest piece of radio i've ever heard in my life ever thank you and just thank you, Tom, and you will be missed. Steve, thank you for that. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. This is Chris on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Father. How you doing? It's Likas 101. I am your professor, son. How are you? I'm doing good, Dad. Um, listen, I'm going to tell you, you're, you're my, you are, I consider you my real dad because my real dad, uh, left my mom when she, when I was like two years old. And, um, I tell everybody you're my dad. I got the radio cranked outside the restaurant and people are like, what are you doing? I'm like, my dad's on the radio, you know, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what I'm calling about is, 
I've been listening to you since I was 17, and I've always, you know, listened to Like Us 101, and I preach it to everybody. But the worst thing in the world is that I'm actually in the predicament that most listeners are in, and that is that uh, I was married uh, after I had a kid. <laughs> my uh, my girlfriend in high school got pregnant two years ago, and uh, my well, son. My, may, I, may I ask why you let that happen? Uh, you know, Dad, I wasn't I wasn't listening to to the Like Us One On One teachings that you were putting on the radio, and um, you know, I I was so stupid enough as to think that she couldn't get pregnant because we had unprotected sex numerous times, and I thought maybe it's because I'm sterile or maybe because she's sterile. So we just kept going without any doctor's note, without any kind of anything. We just kept going, and one day, you know, I, I find out I was leaving for the military. I'm pregnant, and I tried throwing the hail mary. I did everything that you told me to do, and now I'm in a worse situation because there's worse things than well, I did. I did tell you to use a condom. Absolutely, and I, I just didn't listen, you know. And um, I'm now I'm in the worst situation because I actually married this chick. And now why did wait? So you of, compounded the mistake. Now were you already yep. a student? Yep, uh, not a very good student, dude. Uh, yeah, well, haven't you heard what I said about getting married? If you if you if you're stuck paying child support, the least you could do is just pay the child support, and that's the end of your commitment. What are you doing? I don't know, man. And, and after hearing today when I woke up here in Corolla talking about the the station going goodbye, and then I heard your opening statement. That guy was right. That's the best radio I've ever heard. It, it's, it's dawned on me that uh, this may be the last time I ever get to talk to you about how to solve my my problem right now in my life. So w where do you think I should go from here? Because I feel like I'm trapped, man. I feel like um, this, wo this woman is trying to control me, uh, not tell me who I can and can't see, what I should do with my life. Well, and... uh, you don't have to be married, Chris. Uh, uh, end it now. Yeah. And Nick, a... take care of your responsibility and move on with your life. And get a vasectomy or something, won't you? That's, uh, that sounds like a good idea. Does it hurt? Oh, you just you even add one, huh? <laughs> no, but uh, vasectomy or a condom or something. But you can't keep riding bareback. you got to stop. Yeah, you know, we don't even have sex anymore, man. Cause, uh, I mean with I the just... next sucker. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's a great idea. Well, um, I mean, yeah, I'm actually considering the divorce aspect because... I feel like if if I stick with her, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be just pissed off all the time, and then I'll. And not only that, anyway. every two days you stay, you owe her another day of vagina money. Oh my lord, that's so, exactly right, huh? Make the decision as fast as you can and get out. Listen, Dad, can you do me a huge favor? Can you uh, can you kick me out, Brian Whitman style? I was the guy who came up with that, by the way. <laughs> Brian Whitman style. Do we still have that? Just do a just do a crying baby and a plane crash. That's it. That's the case. <laughs> Let's see what we got here. Hey, Dad, uh, well, real quick, man, I just want to say uh, goodbye, and I hope you're not gone for too long, and you are my father, man, even though I've never met you in real life. Man, you're my dad. I hope I get to hang out with you someday, dude. Chris, thank you very much for the call. I don't really understand what the plane had to do with it. 1-800-5800-TOV. That's our telephone number. It's Like Us 101 at a special time today uh, because at 5 o'clock I've got a statement I'm going to make to you. And then I will take your calls about that statement coming up at 5 o'clock Pacific time. Uh, Kira on the Tom Like Us show. Hello. Hi, Daddy. How are you? How you doing, dear? I'm doing very well. Um, I'm, I love your subject today. The reason for that is because I started listening to you when I was 14 years old. I'm 22 now. And um, you basically taught me loving myself is the key to it all. And I know a lot of girls listening out there are thinking that's crazy because a lot of girls think you know what they think of you. But, um, yeah, you taught me how to love myself, and I just want to thank you for that. It's the most important thing I can tell you. I agree. I'm actually... Um, that's, I'm actually going into that line of work, and it's all thanks to you. Well, I'm so proud of you, Kira, and thank you so much. I appreciate the call on Like Us 101. I am your professor. Let's say hello here to James on Like Us 101. Hello. Hello, Father. Hello, son. Uh, I got a question. Uh, I'm 20 years old, and uh, when I was a kid, my dad left my mom, and uh, I've heard you say before that, kids who grow up with just their mom tend to be pussies toward girls right and uh i and i am i mean i, I get really nervous around them and shy and stuff and, but i want to start a bullpen 
and I just want to know how to get out there. Well, uh, step one, uh, you have to stop caring about the people you're dating, okay? You are dating for fun. Right. That's why you're dating. You're dating to get laid. You're not looking for a girlfriend, a live-in, a wife, a partner, a life partner. You're just looking to get laid. Okay. Can you keep it that way? Yeah. <laughs> you don't sound too convinced. Well, I don't know. It's just, you know, I'm afraid that I, you know, uh, you know, I believe in your teachings, and but I'm afraid that if I, something happens and I get caught up in that, I mean... I, you know, I'm afraid I might make a mistake, and it's just, you know, and then plus, like, if I do get a girl, and how do I start a bullpen up? Like, do I tell her I want her in my bullpen, or how do I, I go about no, that? No, no, well, who else you date is none of her business. But you didn't call her your girlfriend, did you? No, no. You didn't meet her family, did you? No. You didn't no. meet her friends, did you? No. You sure? Yeah, no, I mean, I'm not with any girl right now, so... Good. So the bottom line here is you don't want these women's face to see the light of day. Okay. You understand? Yes. You, so you know what that means. You're not going to see them during the day. There's no picnics. There's no going to the baseball game. There's no picking daisies along the side of the uh, Ventura Freeway. Okay? And uh, do I just, you know, just... Tell them what it is, that it's just sexual and that's about it? You're not going to tell them. They're going to have to see by the, way you, by the way you behave. Okay. Well, Tom, thank you for everything, man. I'm going to miss so much. And uh, I'm, believe me, I'm going to go and, uh, you know, do all your rules and, and, and try to stay out of trouble. And uh, please, can you take me out the bong hit and then blow me up? Yes, I can, James. Here you go. I guess one on one to uh, the first two hours of the show today, three to five, so that we can leave the last half of the show for what's going to happen at five o'clock. And um, don't forget, we'll be here tomorrow as well for two hours. We'll be here from three until five tomorrow as we bring the curtain down on 97.1 FM Talk, uh, a radio station that has been broadcasting the FM Talk format now for almost 14 years. And I've been lucky enough to be here for almost 12 of them. Here are your telephone calls at 1-800-5800-TOM. Eric, you're on with your professor. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. Uh, I just want to let you know that lately I've been, like, really, like, almost depressed and stuff. But right now, just I just tuned in and I heard you saying about believing in yourself and having a reason and all that. And I just want to tell you that it really motivated me to become happier and everything. I really want to thank you, and I'm going to miss you. Thank you for that, Eric. I, I hope that did help you. And, uh, you know, it's the most important thing to remember. It's more important than any advice I can give you on this program. Yeah, it's the best I've ever heard on this program, Tom. I really want to thank you for that. You're welcome, Eric. Thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Max on the Tom Likas Show, Likas 101, final edition. Hello. I got to thank you for all the uh, countless hours of uh, entertainment, knowledge, you know, for drive time and getting us through all the traffic, and it's been great for as long as I've been listening, and you're one of the true uh, philosophers of, of our time. Thank the you for that. true stage of, of Poon. Um, I wanted to get to the question. I'm, I'm 28. I've got a little bullpen. Um, should I go ahead and tell them I live at home with my folks, or... No, 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 you're not going to say that. First of all, they're not coming to your home. No. 
I mean, remember, if you are a Ligus 101 student, the chicks don't come to your home. You go to their home. Right. If they live with their parents, you go to the back seat of your car or her car. And what about when the conversation comes up? Well, you're not going to marry her. You're just having sex with her. Right. So, by the way, I recommend you say as little as possible about anything. Just hit it and quit it. Hit it and quit it. All right. Can you take me out uh, Rihanna style? No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the last two days of the show, I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to take you out with an umbrella. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Let's say hello to Steve on Like Is One Hundred One Final Edition. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? How Not are you? much. I'm doing great. Hey, man. I just wanted to call in and say you're amazing. And um, you know what? I I was I grew up. I was born with a single mom, and it was just us two boys. My dad took when I uh, I was born on his birthday, and he took off. And you know what? I surrounded myself with people who were successful, and I learned from them. And I, I, and I, I'm 26 years old. I just turned 26. I'm in a band that just got, we're getting a record deal, and, and I own my own record label that is funded through another friend who owns a petroleum company. And I'm, like, I'm working on making myself a millionaire. I want to be successful, and there's nothing that's going to stop me from doing that. And listening to you just motivates me to keep getting there. You know, I, I, I don't look back. You know, I drive straight forward, and I drive through people, and I, I'm going to be successful. And you keep me motivated. And I'm kind of, I'm really bummed that you're going to be off the air. But, you know, you got to do what you got to do. I understand, and again, it's not what I got to do. Uh, keep in mind, uh, as I'll explain at 5 o'clock, uh, that uh, I am here. If the company needs me, I'm here. The company's decided they, uh, they're they not going to be needing my services because they're going to do a different format. And if that's what they're going to do, then uh, I will gladly sit on the sidelines with my pom-pom and my paycheck, and I'll be a very happy employee. Well, you rock. You're going you're gonna to end up you're gonna, you're gonna end up somewhere. You're going to... You're gonna you're gonna kill it no matter where you go. So, um, thanks for everything. That's all I can say to you. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. This is the final edition of Like Us One Hundred One. We moved it to a special time because at five o'clock I've got a special statement for all you long time listeners. If you know people who've been listening for a long time, if you know people who haven't tuned in in a while, if you know people who might forget to tune in, this is a good time to call them and let them know that at five o'clock. I'm going to be uh, saying a lot of things here, and um, it will pretty much answer all of your questions that uh, I know you all have about this being our final week on the air. Uh, don't forget, uh, we'll be here all the way through today, and then tomorrow we'll be here from 3 until 5 with an abbreviated show uh, as we uh, ring down the curtain on 97.1 FM Talk in Los Angeles. For those of you living outside of Los Angeles, you'll get a couple of weeks of the best of Lycus or whatever your local station chooses to play, but tomorrow will be our last day with a live brand spanking new show here in Southern California, at least on this station, and we are really, really thrilled for the opportunity we've had here. More of your telephone calls coming up. It's the final edition of Like Us 101. If you have questions for your professor, now is the time to call in. Tom, 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 Like Us. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's the Tom Like Us Show. From Hollywood. It's the Who Wanna Wear game. No, it's the Tom Likas show. At least until tomorrow at 5 o'clock it is. Special edition of Likas 101 and the final edition of Likas 101, at least for now. So if you have questions for your professor, <laughs> there's no waiting anymore. Now you have to get the question in. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Stella! Well, the Tom Likas show. Hello. Likas! Long time, first time. I'm really excited. Long time yeah. listener, first time caller. <laughs> I had to let you know that my husband and I both listen to Likas. It's right on. We have a nine-year-old son, and I tell him all the time, love yourself. You can have anything you want, and we teach him a very mild version of Likas now. So we're instilling it. 
planting the seeds, and, and he'll have great potential, and he knows. Yeah, we're pouring the wine. We're not planting any seeds today. We're uh... <laughs> No seed planting, but he knows like it's already. And I just wanted to thank you for your lessons, and they're absolutely correct. Oh, very nice. What are we drinking here today, Gary? It's a little Maryville Sauvignon Blanc. Well, Maryville Sauvignon Blanc, very nice. As you know, I have a double life. I've been doing a wine show for all these years, and, uh, of course, I, I own a home in wine country. That did know. Mm. My friend called me today and had to cry about, like, if he's leaving, but he'll still be rich. He just bought that house in wine country. <laughs> <laughs> i got to tell you, um, I wandered around the radio station today, and a number of people were looking at me like I'm dead. Oh, Hi. <laughs> Hi, like they're saying. How are you? Oh, are you okay? Uh, oh yeah, I'm lousy. I've I've got a paycheck and I've got to be uh, planting grapes and uh, planting tomatoes and. Uh, and starting that like book so that I can put it on his bookshelf. Oh, right? boo hoo hoo! Yeah. <laughs> I, I I told you uh, to get that fun together, and uh, I've been uh, preparing, uh, as I've been telling you all to prepare, of course. But uh, anyway, it's our final edition of Like Is 101. Stella, thank you for that. I am your professor. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Gustavo on the Tom Like Is Show. Hello. Hello, Dad. Hello, son. How are you, Tom? It's a pleasure to speak to you. Sure uh, I want to just say how, yes. how you truly are the father that I never had. Uh, I, I feel really bummed out that you're not going to be on the radio no more. Uh, I was kind of feeling guilty. I haven't tuned in in a while. I tune in to these news, and I, and I got really bummed out. But that being said, just wanted to thank you for all the great advice you've given me and all the listeners throughout the, throughout the years you've been on the radio. I truly was uh, a little bit of a sucker when it came to females, kind of soft, you know, go about it the soft way, try to spend a lot of money and, and whatnot. And with you, I learned to be kind of an a-hole, man. And being an a-hole gets you so many more females. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I've been a complete jerk and an a-hole for years. Just ask all the people in the radio business. They'll tell you. I'm, I'm a complete creep. Uh, but one thing that gets you is laid. You get laid like there's no tomorrow. Big time. You know what? I got a few buddies, man. They're kind of soft or whatnot. They go about it the soft way. And you can't help but kind of laugh at them a little bit. But that being said, everyone handles their business their own way. But I just want to say, man, that I absolutely love your show. I'm going to miss you, Tom. And it truly is an honor to be on, on the show and, and the final uh, Like is 101. I've been a listener for, uh, since I was maybe 19. I'm 23 now. And it's worked out well for me. And all I can say is thank you, Tom. You're the father I never had. And could you please take me out Kobe style? Of course um, I can, Gustavo. And, uh, there you go. Dad. Thank you, All son. Right. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. 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 Tom. That's our telephone number. Oh. And uh, we continue. This is the final edition of Like Us 101. Uh, let's say hello here to Mike on the Tom Like Us show. What's up, Tom? Not much, Mike. Hey, Tom. Um, I've been listening for like a year, and uh, I guess I haven't caught the answer to my question. Is uh, What's a what's, uh, Hail Mary? What's a Hail Mary? Uh, when did you become a student here? Um, like I said, about a year ago, but I don't catch you every single day. No, but uh, I'm talking about a student of Lycus 101. Have you ever been a student of Lycus 101? Oh, yeah, of course. So you've been in the classroom repeatedly, and you've never heard me talk about a Hail Mary? I've heard you say it, but I don't know exactly what it is. It has to do with a woman getting pregnant or something. Right, yes. Yes, it does. Oh. Uh, you know how in a football game... Uh, there's a situation where team is down by, uh, you know, maybe six points, maybe seven, maybe six. And uh, there's only less than a minute left. And maybe you're third down and 28 yards to go or fourth down and 30 yards to go or whatever. Uh, punting doesn't do you any good because you got no time left in the game. So your quarterback heaves that ball all the way downfield. The odds of it getting caught, the odds of a touchdown are long. Right? Right. It's called a Hail Mary. You've uh, heard of that, right? Yes, sir. It's the same thing uh, with uh, your chick getting pregnant. When your chick gets pregnant, she says, I'm keeping it, and that's that. You're going to live up to your responsibilities. That's it. 
So you better be ready, because I'm going to be expecting you to help out with the, the diapers and the feedings. And, and you better have some money, too. You better get a job, you deadbeat. When she says that, the Hail Mary is just like the quarterback in football who's uh, all the way downfield and needs to score a touchdown quickly. So okay. what you say to her is, honey, I love you so much. One day we'll get married, and there'll be a house and a white picket fence, and there'll be a children, lots of children in our yard, and we're going to live happily ever after. The kids will have swings, and it'll be just a perfect situation. But having said that, you can see I'm not ready today to have a child. I'm not ready today. I haven't finished school or don't have enough money. We don't have a house. We don't have a place to raise children properly in the right school district, what have you. So if you have the abortion now, down the line we get married, we can have all the kids you want. Oh, uh, genius, Tom. Um, okay. Genius. So if you get her to have the abortion, then part of the Hail Mary is you have to take her by the hand down to the abortion clinic, the women's clinic, whatever they're calling it these days. You take her down there. Pay in cash. You pay. You pay. <laughs> you're there to make sure it happens. You do not give her the cash and send her down there. You oh, have no. to appear to love her. You have to appear to care. Get her down there. She has the abortion. And then uh, our little twist is you take it out of McDonald's for that egg McMuffin or a McGriddle, uh, whichever works. Uh-huh. And then uh, you take her home, take her to bed, tuck her in, and then you say, don't you ever call me again. Ever. Stay away from me, for God's sake. <laughs> 